had a hard time uh, catching a word for this episode of uh, Sipping on the Sabbath, praying, Lord, what is it you want me to say? God, give me your grace, give me an insight, something, Lord, and just persevering in all that, trying to stay optimistic and hopeful in the midst of what I thought was a delay from the Lord. But then I realized, wait a minute, that's what our readings this weekend are all about. Good to see you again, friends. I continue to come to you today from St. John, New Brunswick, where I'm visiting with some of my companions, the Cross Brothers, for a period of time. And the Israelites are in a spot of bother. Moses himself goes up the hill and he holds his hands up, interceding, praying before the Lord. It is a posture of surrender. It's a posture of willingness but he because he is like you and me very much a human being he grew tired and he needed to rely on the help of two others Aaron and her to hold up his hands And as long as Moses hands were held up the Israelites persevered in battle but when his hands grew tired and weary and to put them down the Israelites began to experience uh, defeat so the Lord himself asks Moses to do this, and Moses relies upon the help of others. Moses is persevering in the midst of a situation which seemingly looked quite difficult and impossible, but yet Moses maintained his disposition, his attitude of being an intercessor. And interestingly enough, he held in his hand the staff that he held, back earlier when he touched the water of the Nile and it turned into blood as a part of God's way of softening the heart of Pharaoh to let his people go and also the staff that Moses used to strike the rock at Horeb to bring forth water after the people of Israel were complaining why is the Lord drawn us to this place in order to for us to die. Life in, his, in Egypt was a lot better, was it not? But no, it certainly was not. And so the Lord provides the people with water, and Moses strikes the rock of Horeb with his staff, the same staff he's holding now, as he is there before the Lord, interceding and praying, uh, persevering, relying on the help of Aaron and her, Aaron and her, H-U-R, not H-E-R, her, <laughs> be in this place of interceding, standing in the gap before uh, the Lord for the Israelites. And I wonder, you know, what is it that you and I hold on to? I don't mean in terms of some kind of a lucky charm, but hold on to as a visible reminder of the Lord's action, Lord's role in our life. Maybe a medallion, maybe the Bible, maybe the 24-hour chip for any of you listening who are part of the 12-step recovery program. What is it that we hold on to as this reminder that, yes, we are not alone? The angels, the saints, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are on our side. They are with us, and we pray for the grace to persevere. Persevere in the midst of a situation which might seem quite difficult and, well, is difficult. Life can be uh, quite difficult. I mean, I've had my share of ups and downs uh, this week, as I'm sure you have. But we persevere in the midst of that. And often I find myself stopping in situations and just praying the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And I say often heavy on the wisdom. I need your wisdom, Lord, which is not simply the accumulation of knowledge, but the application of that knowledge uh, in situations that arise in our life. And Timothy himself, we're continuing to go through 2 Timothy, Paul's second letter to his spiritual son, Timothy, is encouraged to persevere in the midst of the trials and difficulties of his own life in spreading the gospel and witnessing to the faith. And he is encouraged to stick with the plan. How often do we, when, again, difficulties come along, trials, stresses, disappointments, frustrations, anxieties, things don't go our way, 
our timetable is being interrupted, uh, etc. You know, you just you just fill in the blank with whatever goes on in our life. How often can we, in those situations, be tempted to ditch the plan, just ditch the old plan and adopt a new plan? Now. Sometimes the old plan does legitimately need to be ditched or abandoned because it's not working. Think of the old plan of, of the church. It's the old plan of just maintenance mode. The same old, same old. That needs to be abandoned. Ditch that and adopt a new plan, the new plan that the Lord has for us, to be people who are missionary, who search out the lost, to go to the peripheries as Pope Francis says, and be part of the renewal of the church, living one's life imbued with the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit, and being open to the promptings, the movements of the Lord to abandon, to ditch old ways of thinking, old ways of acting, old ways of, of planning and whatnot, to be really available to the Lord to bring us to new horizons and new landscapes of opportunity uh, to proclaim his name. So we sometimes need to ditch the old plan, but the temptation, I think, in our own personal individual lives can be in those instances to say, well, what else can I do? I need to do something else instead. And because we are human, like Moses, we too can grow weary and we too can grow tired because of what we might see as lack of results. All the efforts that we are putting in to renewal, to evangelization, are they producing any fruit? Where are the results? Lord, don't you see what's going on? Lord, are you not hearing me? And the pleas, the cries, the, the prayers that I am sending forth to you, Lord Jesus. The world we're living in now is becoming much more secular, much more anti-religious, anti-God, anti-family, etc. And so we all have our share of suffering and the disappointments and the setbacks that we can experience because of this. But yet the Lord is encouraging us in today's scriptures to realize that we are not in this alone, that he's always with us, the Lord's offering us the grace we need to persevere. He says, pray always in today's gospel. Pray always and do not lose heart. But yet we say, Lord, like how much longer, Lord? Lord, how much more are we going to have to put up with, Lord? The Lord says, just trust me. I am, I am with you in all circumstances. I'm with you in all things. It's not so much about what you do. It is more importantly about who you are. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter, and I've got your back. I'm with you. Do I truly, honestly trust the Lord? Jesus, I surrender myself to you. You just take care of everything. And give me this increased capacity to pray, increased capacity to persevere and not to lose heart. Give me a heart that, that beats in union with your heart, Lord Jesus, for the needs of the world. Again, the temptation could be to water things down, to try to find the lowest common denominator, to scratch our itchy ears. I chose this as the title of today's reflection, Itchy Ears. Not because it necessarily is part of the scripture readings that we have heard proclaimed for this particular Sunday, but it is an extension of the second reading, St. Paul's second reading, second letter to Timothy. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, even though I sound like a broken record. It's important to read a few verses ahead and a few verses after the particular excerpt that we have for the readings on a particular Sunday. And if you get your Bibles out, we are going to go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itchy ears, ah, itchy ears, itchy ears. <laughs> oh, I lost my place. <laughs> itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves <laughs> teachers to suit their own likings. 
and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So do I have itchy ears? Is there someone else I could possibly be listening to? Is there someone else out there that I could talk to? What's some new idea, you know, that's going to kind of be the, the newest thing, the best thing since sliced bread? Pray always. Do not lose heart, the Lord says. Trust in me. I want to trust in you, Jesus. I want to listen to you, Jesus. And I listen to the church. I do listen to Jesus. The widow in today's gospel, she herself was also a human being and would have been tempted to give up but yet she persevered. She did not become a card-carrying member of the victimhood club, becoming angry, becoming resentful, but instead, with her confidence solidly in the Lord, she became, vis-a-vis -vis this particular judge, a holy pest. <laughs> Just a holy pest, continually seeking justice, and she found satisfaction. You know, and there are many, many individuals around us who are like this particular widow in today's gospel. I was um, downtown St. John uh, this past week uh, looking for a very nice coffee shop, which I found. And I entered into the, the cathedral here, the local Catholic cathedral, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And in the cathedral, there was a small band, widows, widowers, men and women dedicated to praying the rosary. And they were there with their hands held high, as spiritually speaking, open, lifted up, as Moses was interceding for the Israelites before the Lord. And it was a very encouraging, affirming sign, a, a gathering of these individuals who are praying. They're interceding. So my journey to downtown, or actually what's called here, they call it uptown. I'm going uptown St. John. And the Lord allowed me to experience this little band of faithful followers praying, interceding before the Lord through the intercession of our Blessed Mother for the needs of the local church. And I commend you for your own faithfulness, in your own perseverance, in your own commitment to praying for the needs of your own parish, your own particular diocese, your family, your friends, co-workers, fellow students, whomever, and don't stop doing that. Continue to be an intercessor. Continue to be like Moses, lifting up your hands, praying at that moment for the needs of the local church, that your prayers are indeed powerful. Your prayers are being heard, and your prayers will be answered according to God's time and his particular way. We just cooperate with the Lord and let him uh, do uh, the rest. There was something in the words of the widow that triggered the judge. We don't know how long she was interceding or pleading, rather, uh, with this judge for satisfaction, but she did it for a period of time. All we're told in the gospel is that later the judge changed his mind. Moses was in his position of interceding, pleading for a period of time, the widow for a period of time, and we ourselves will be in it for a period of time. But in relation to eternal life, it'll be a very, very short time, maybe even just the blink of an eye, because eternity is for a very, very long time. It is time forever. So don't give up. Father Bob Bedard, who is the founder of my community, the Companions of the Cross, had a vision, and he proclaimed it in such a way in stating that I see the church waking up and coming explosively alive. How is this possible? By the grace of God. And through whom will it happen? Through you and through me. And the Lord, in the gospel, he asks the question, that when a son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? 
And when I read that and I was considering it over the course of the week, the Lord inspired in me a parallel conversation that Abraham had with God about the situation of Sodom. And Abraham engages in this Q&A with the Lord that for the sake of the 50, for the sake of the 45, for the sake of the 40, for the sake of the 30, for the sake of the 20, for the sake of the 10, Lord, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And the Lord says, no, for the sake of this small few, this little band of faithful followers who are striving to live their life in conformity with my will, the Lord says, I will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. The Lord's invitation for you and for me is to stay faithful. What did Mother Teresa say at the end of our life? We will not be judged on what we have done, but by how we have remained faithful to what it is that we are being called to do, to stand in the gap, to persevere, to keep our hands up, and to ask others to assist us in that. I cannot keep my hands up forever because I am a human being, and I grow weary, and I grow tired. But when I know that there are others there who are supporting and encouraging me, then, by God's grace, I persevere one day at a time, sometimes one hour at a time. The world, the flesh, and the devil, they're strong, but they're also wrong. They are very, very wrong. I do not want to have itchy ears you know, going after, you know, the latest of all things, listening here, listening there. You please tell me what I want to hear. I want to listen to and respond and correspond in my life to God's will for me. Pray always, the Lord says, and do not lose heart. What you and I are going through right now is not easy. There's so much, there is so much uncertainty in the world today, politically, economically, militarily, questions in society, questions in our families, our friends, etc. It's not easy. The Lord knows that. We don't sometimes even know what's going to come next. The Lord knows, and the Lord is head over heels in love with us, and whatever it is that's going to happen, the Lord has our back. I want to surrender my life over to him. So how can I cooperate with the Lord in praying always and not lose heart? Because I need to cooperate. Grace builds on nature. If I desire to cooperate with the Lord, then his grace flows in and through me. What are some things I can do? Commit every day to a time of prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation are to be the safest emotional place on earth. It's where I can get real with the Lord and honest with the Lord and allow him to communicate his love and his mercy to me. In the simplest terms, prayer is asking and meditating is listening for the answer. Have a list of people that we intercede for members of our families, friends, fellow workers, co -stu fellow students, etc., that we intercede for them. And again, at its simplest form, it would be simply to say, Lord, bless John today in every way that I desire to be blessed today. Intercede for them every day. Have your list of prayer people that you pray for. Have a Mass offered for a special intention, maybe for the renewal of your parish, maybe for the spiritual and temporal needs of your local bishop or the, the diocese or archdiocese in which you live. The power of the Eucharist. Do not underestimate the power of just one Mass to bring about profound conversion, change, and healing in our lives. Pray the Rosary every day. Why do we pray the rosary every day? Because Mary asked us to, and we all do what our mothers ask us to do. <laughs> do we not, right? So our mother Mary is asking us to pray every day. So pray the rosary every day. And find a little band of people that you can pray with and that you know are praying for you. 
maybe you're having a bad day. People that I pray for, I, I say to them, just send me a text message. Simply say, bad day, pray. I don't need to know all the details about what's going on, but when I get that text message from you or you get one from me that says, bad day, pray, just pray. Just start praying, just offering up sacrifices for each other to know that, again, we are not alone. There are others who are with us, praying with us and praying for us and loving us, even in the midst of our messiness and our brokenness, but are there to support us and, and to pray for us. And keep our eyes fixed on the prize. The prize is eternal life. There's a, there's a slogan in 12-step recovery that says, this too shall pass. In terms of eternity, what we are going through, and I, I'm, I don't mean to minimize or just kind of just dismiss the, the genuine real angst and pain that we can experience in life at the hands of others or even of our own creation, but this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And one day these trials, these difficulties that we are experiencing in life will become jewels in the crown of eternal life that the Lord places on our head. But first, we have to go through it. I don't pray, God, help me take this away from me. Instead, I say, God, help me get through this. And again, there have been a few times this past week when I've had to stop in the midst of what I was experiencing and say, okay, okay, God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference because the ears start to get itchy, right? Oh, I, where else can I go? What else can I do? Who else can I listen to who's going to tell me what I want to hear rather than what I need to hear? Let me just conclude by reading a few other verses from 2 Timothy. Uh, this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1, 5, and 11b and 12. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of stress. Oh, okay. There will come times of stress, but you're there with us. There will be individuals who hold the form of religion, but deny the power of it. Religion, religari, to bind together. And the Lord has bound us together. And there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is power and grace in the work and the actions of the church. There is power and grace in saying, Lord Jesus, make me a missionary disciple to send me out. Jesus, I want to be part of this little band of faithful followers of you in my local church, praying for the needs of the church. From all of this, the Lord has rescued me. All this being the, the stress, the trials, the difficulties, the ups and downs, has rescued me by his death on the cross. Not necessarily rescuing me from it now, exempting me from going through this now, but instead has himself purchased you and me by dying on the cross. And anybody else that comes along and we got the itchy ears, you know, tell me what I need to hear, they're not going to save us. I cannot save myself. I need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Why do I experience persecutions in trying to follow the Lord Jesus? Because the world doesn't want to hear about Jesus. And why does the world not want to hear about Jesus? Because this ain't heaven. But I want to get to heaven, and Jesus help me today. And so let us pray. So, Lord Jesus, we, as always, just thank you for the gift of today. Even, Lord, in the midst of whatever is going on in our life, both the blessings and the uncertainties, Lord, help us to remember, Lord, that no matter what it is we're going through, that you are always with us. 
And we want to surrender ourselves over to you, Lord Jesus. You have said to us, Lord, pray always and do not lose heart. You are not a God who sets us up for failure. You are a God in calling us to this, Lord, or offering us the graces that we do need. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, that in each of our lives, right now, Lord, you would fire up a deeper appetite and appreciation for prayer. We want Jesus to be women and men of profound prayer. We want to be part of this faithful band, this remnant Lord. We want to be the widow of today's gospel who persevered, who kept our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. Help us be like Timothy, Lord, who again was encouraged to persevere in the midst of all that was going on in his life with this reliance, Lord, upon you. We pray especially, Lord Jesus, for any of us right now who are, because we are human, and have grown weary, and have grown tired, who are losing heart. We see all that's going on in the world, Lord, all the uncertainty of our culture and our society, Lord. And we can, Lord, become discouraged, overwhelmed. We just want to admit that, Lord, right now. But Lord, you don't judge us, you don't condemn us for that, but you instead love us in the midst of that. And so we, Lord Jesus, if any way lost heart, we pray, Lord Jesus, for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit right now to come into our life, to refocus us, Lord. Help us to stay rooted in you, Jesus. We sometimes, Lord, have itchy ears, want to chase after other things. Sometimes, Lord, we're looking for the softer, easier way. Sometimes, Lord, we want to take our will back. Sometimes, Lord, we don't want to accept the fact that we are powerless. We want to be powerful, Lord, but we're not, Lord. You're the one, Lord, who has all the power. And thanks be to God that we have found you, Jesus. Or more specifically, Lord, that you have found us. You have found us where we are, Lord, and you are speaking this word of encouragement and strength to us today. We continue, Lord, to pray for anyone watching or listening on this podcast who has their own particular difficulty and struggle in life. That you would, Lord, remind them that you are with them as you are with all of us, Lord. And that you are going to help us, Lord, not by taking it away, but by helping us to get through it one day at a time, one hour at a time, Jesus. We pray also, Lord, for anyone who is far away from you because of past or present sin in their life. Anyone living under layers of shame or remorse or fear resentment, jealousy, bitterness, insecurity, Lord. We want our security, Lord, to be in you. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would massage our hearts and minister to us right now, Lord Jesus. Wrap us, Lord Jesus, in the power of your grace and your mercy. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be truly on fire truly desirous of a deeper relationship with you. We want to pray always, Lord. And so inspire on us, Lord, ways to do that and opportunities to respond to this word, Jesus. We want to pray always, Lord, and not lose heart. Help us keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. We want to be part of your plan, Lord. We offer ourselves to you, Lord. Wake us up, Lord. We want to be part. We want to be part of a church that is explosively alive, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, if that means we're going to jettison and 
get rid of old ways of thinking, old ways of acting, then give us the courage and the humility to accept that and the faith to embrace the new ways of thinking, new ways of acting, new ways of proclaiming your name, Jesus, through all the world. Mother Mary and St. Joseph, and here in St. John, New Brunswick, St. John, please pray for us. Amen. Okay, well, there you go. God bless the rest of your day. You know the routine. Stay caffeinated. Let's keep praying for each other. Thank you for your ongoing support of this ministry that makes this ministry possible. And the Lord is stirring up in my heart, in my mind, new ideas for the future about what else to do to proclaim his name through this social media platform. Please continue to share. Please continue to send me your comments, like it, and all that other good jazz. In the meantime, remember that when we are powerless, that is when we are strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. And may Almighty God bless you and yours today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.